The Industry 101. Here are some highlights in this episode. I think where a lot of challenges lie is that we have a lot of artists who are not used to performing. They're not comfortable with performing. Um, and so they don't perform as much. How frustrating it was to put the effort into participating in open mics and having your artists do this and, and doing little showcases or small concerts and not really getting the response. Uh, and they're there uh, just checking out the new talent. If they hear something that catches their ear, then they, you know, then they come back and report that, hey, look, I got this information from this artist and I think this is somebody that's worth really looking into. Maybe we should really consider signing them. Um, and then there's some markets where that just doesn't happen. There's some markets where you're promised it's gonna happen. Welcome to the Industry 101. Class is beginning right now. Hey, welcome to the Industry 101, where if you have questions, I'll get you answers. I'm your host, Robbie Jenkins, and today we're going to address a question from a manager who wants to know about the importance of open mics to a new artist, and another viewer who wants to know the difference between an agent and a manager. So we'll come right back and we'll address those questions. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Robbie Jenkins, and as all of you are doing your part to fight the coronavirus pandemic by staying home, we here at Overture Entertainment Television will do our best to provide programming that both educates and entertains you. So please, stay home, stay safe, and tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Tune in. Make sure you tune in. Tune, tune in. in. Tune in. Stay home. While you're at home. Perfect time for the whole family to tune in. No laugh this time. This is a serious matter. Are you a rap artist, singer, musician, or a band? We have a program in development especially for you. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. And we're back. Take your seat and take some notes. You don't want to miss what we have for you in this episode of The Industry 101. We're back, and thank you for joining us. Uh, in this episode, our first question comes to us from SB in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, thank you, SB, for your, your submission. And your question was, how much do production companies pay attention to open mics or smaller scale concerts? Great question. Um, and I have to say, we, we, we get a lot of great questions that come in. Uh, thank you again, SB. So. I remember the rest of your email and, and you were talking about how frustrating basically it was, I'm paraphrasing, how frustrating it was to put the effort into participating in open mics and having your artists do this and, and doing little showcases or small concerts and not really getting the response or, or acknowledgement from some of the production companies 
probably in your area or at large, right? And you're trying to figure out, well, how, how much are they really paying attention to that? So let's, let's just say this, let, um, there's a lot that goes into being an artist. There's a lot that some people don't really put enough emphasis on, and there's some things that put a lot of emphasis on. I don't think anybody has a problem with putting the emphasis on the recording and getting the recorded music. I think where a lot of challenges lie is that we have a lot of artists who are not used to performing. They're not comfortable with performing, um, and so they don't perform as much. That That's a deciding factor, I think, for a lot of uh, production companies and or labels, indie or major, who are thinking about signing someone because they want to be able to know that whatever we put out in terms of material, that these people will be able to go out on stage and just sweep it clean with their performance. And I think this is absolutely important. So these open mics, first of all, for the development of the artist, it's a very important factor because some artists need to kind of cut their teeth on performing this way, right? It's, um, it's a way for them to get used to it and learn how to work with the audience, learn how to feel comfortable being out on stage and, and delivering, just what to do to deliver, how to deliver, um, what are some of the things that audiences respond well to, what are some things that just went over their heads and they just didn't get it. Um, so I think that that's, first of all, that's very, that's very crucial. And I think any production company, I have a production company, and if I were looking to sign a new artist right now, one of the criteria would be that they are actually performers as well. They'd have to be able to perform uh, because that's a crucial part of the promotional process to promote any of the new material that they're, they're, they're coming out with and that we're gonna re release. So I would say they absolutely do pay attention to that. The problem, the challenge I think, is getting them to come, getting them to attend. Because there's some people that, you know, depending on, and I don't know what it's like in St. Louis, only you would know that, but I think in certain markets, it's hard to get record executives or even their representatives to come out and check out an open performance. I know in certain markets, it's a regular thing where on certain, you know, one night out of the week, the record executive or their representative will go to an event, an open mic, and it's usually after work. They usually start like maybe six, seven o'clock, sometimes eight, uh, and they're there uh, just checking out the new talent. If they hear something that catches their ear, then they, you know, then they come back and report that, hey, look, I got this information from this artist, and I think this is somebody that's worth really looking into. Maybe we should really consider signing them. Um, and then there's some markets where that just doesn't happen. There's some markets where you're promised it's gonna happen. Uh, a lot of events where I call the pay to play, where you know you can perform here, but um, you're gonna have to buy or, or get people to buy X amount of tickets. And there's gonna be a representative from this label there, so they'll be in the audience, you know, so this is a great opportunity for you. And that's not to say that sometimes that's not true. Sometimes it is that, sometimes it's not, right? So what you're looking for, I think, SB, is something where you are guaranteed that they're going to be there or somebody's going to represent this company and come check out your artist and if you're in, a, in if st louis is a market where it's difficult to get people you know to come then um if they will not come then you bring it to them and the way you do that is you make sure you have someone with the capacity to capture footage of this performance, right? Um, and the importance of this is that it also captures the response from the audience, because that's what, that's what you want them to see. Not so much just that your artist is capable of performing, but how the audience responds to that performance, because that's what's gonna get them excited. They see hundreds of talented people all the time. They wanna know how the audience is, how are they taking it in? Do they really feel this artist? You know, are they really moved to the point where it's like, wow, this is the best thing I've heard or seen in I don't know how long. So you, you get that shot on, on camera, you know, get that, that video footage. Um, if it needs editing, do a little, but don't do a lot of that. You don't want to doctor it up too much. You don't want to throw a lot of graphics and stuff on there. Minimal graphics at the beginning, minimal at the end. Um, 
contact information. Make sure you put contact information where you can be reached in case said uh, presentation somehow gets separated from the email when you send it in or if you somehow mailed it in. I don't, you know, I don't know if you send it in on a flash drive or whatever you would do, but you want them to still be able to make that connection with you to say, hey, look, SB, we really liked your artist. We're interested in, in talking to you about it. Um, if nothing else, it still builds up your artist's uh, repertoire performances and builds up their resume, it builds up their experience to keep doing these performances. They could never hurt. You know, I know that most people want that, you know, they want that, you know, that golden ring, that brass ring at the end. They just want to grab it and say, okay, we, we won. Uh, we got a deal out of this. Everything is not going to lead you directly to a deal but everything is a part of that journey to getting there. So I think it's really more important to focus, to focus on the development of your artist and their craft and document everything, you know, with pictures, still pictures and video. So you have all that stuff compiled and whenever it's necessary, then you can present it. And, and that's, to me, I think that's just as important as getting a production company to pay attention. Uh, everybody's not going to have an overnight success. In fact, some overnight sensations that people talk about are about 10 years long. <laughs> so it's a long night. That's, that's probably a little short of what Rip Van Winkle slept. I think he did 20 years. But the bottom line is that this is not a this is not a a race. It's a it's a it's a marathon. You're running a marathon, and you just want to get to the end of it. You want to make sure you last. And the way that people last is if they're consistent and they develop their craft to the point where it's undeniable that they are who they say they are and who you say they are as a manager, right? In fact, if, if you've developed your artist enough, you won't have to oversell them at all. Their, their ability to just do what they do will just happen, you know? Um, I talked about uh, Rihanna in one of my last episodes about how she um, she was like 16, 17, I believe, or maybe 16, when she went um, and was brought to the uh, to um, Rock Nation, not Rock Nation. At that time, it was uh, Jay Z's uh, first company he was with. They they had the meeting. She sang. And he was like, okay, she can't leave this building until we have her signed, right? And they were there till three in the morning. I don't know what time the meeting started. But I know what time it ended, 3 a.m. At 3 a.m., lawyers and everybody were called in. They had hashed out all the terms and they did it. They got, they got the deal done, right? And so, you know, you just never know how it's gonna work. You just can't stop. Just don't stop whatever you do, do not stop. And you, I think you'll see the results that you're really looking for. But if they can't come out to you, then you get that performance to them. Get that recorded version out to them. Okay? When we come back, we're going to have another question where one of our viewers wants to know, what's the difference between an agent and a manager? All right? So, SB, you know, thank you for, for sending your question. It would be nice if we could have had you on so you could explain to this person with me what you do. But we're going to make it happen anyway. See you when you come back. And now we bring you an FYI moment. This moment will present to you an example of some of the things that I mentioned in my responses to question one. And it's sponsored by Cold Cast Couture, a fashion line that is cut from a different cloth. And Overture Entertainment Incorporated, strong inceptions, lasting impressions. Did you know that thousands of artists attend the South by Southwest Conference in Austin, Texas every year? Why? Because a lot of careers get launched there. Grunger's The White Stripes got their record deal there in 2001. And even I just learned that the late Amy Winehouse got her launch there in 2006. And a year later, Katy Perry's showcase earned her several deal offers. Bon Iver's performance there created an industry buzz in 2008. Janelle Monet gave an exciting performance and got her a deal in 2009. Guess who else was there? Kid Cudi. That's right. Two deals in the same year. Amazing. Coming up next. Say, look, this is what I can do for you. 
uh, based on this, I can get you to this level here. And when we get to this level, we are going to get a booking agent. There's a lot of kind of gray area, especially in the beginning of an artist's career, because they're not really exactly sure of the difference. In the beginning of a career, most people have the manager that will do some of the things that an agent does. So let's talk about what the agent does. The complete title of the agent is actually called... Find out more when we come back. Provides young people opportunities to use their creative spirit to develop their individual artistic talents and to develop new works of art while participants work in a diverse ensemble setting. Thank you for remaining in your seats and not leaving class. And now, question two in this episode of The Industry 101. Don't forget to stick around for your assignment at the end. And we're back. <laughs> Thank you for coming back uh, to our second segment of the Industry 101. In this episode, we have our second question coming from someone who's submitted to us before. That would be BG of Greenwich, Connecticut. BG, thank you. Thank you for your second submission and welcome back. So BG's question today, which is a very proficient one, is what's the difference between an agent and a manager? All right, so that's a very good question, and it's one that um, gets kind of blurred a lot. There's a, there's a lot of kind of gray area, especially in the beginning of an artist's career, because they're not really exactly sure of the difference. Um, and for some, there is no difference. So what I'll do first is I'll just clearly define in the simplest terms possible what each role is. Let's start, first of all, with there are several types of managers. There's a personal manager, a business manager. Um, your, your personal manager is the person who gives you the advice on your career. They advise you on the things that you should be doing uh, to advance your career based on their area of expertise. They bring that knowledge to you and they share that in the form of giving you counsel and saying, look, based on where you say you wanna go, this is what I think you should do. A business manager doesn't do that at all. The business manager deals with your finances. It is basically, I won't say basically, but it's a certified, think of it this way, a certified public accountant, right? Who does manage your funds, but the reason why we call them a business manager is because they can look, a good one can look at your contract and say, based on this agreement that's in front of us, here's how this will affect you financially long-term and short-term. So they're called a business manager because they do understand the business aspect of it and they made that connection as to how it will, you know, coincide with your financial picture in your future. So I, I'm going to, BG, if you will allow me, I'm going to make the safe assessment that what you're really going for is what the personal manager does because a lot of people get that part confused. So. In the beginning of a career, most people have the manager that will do some of the things that an agent does. So let's talk about what the agent does. The complete title of the agent is actually called a booking agent, right? So in the music industry, what a booking agent does is they will take on the role of finding you gigs or work, right? So their job is to Anything that has to do with performances or any kind of appearances or other engagements where you may, even, even if it's speaking engagements, they will be the one to handle that aspect, to do the negotiating with whoever the promoter is 
to book you for a specific date, for a specific event, for a specific amount of money. And they work out the terms of, of payment and it's done, right? They take care of all the paperwork along with your entertainment attorney. They have all those agreements all kind of worked out. Most business managers have already worked out a system of how they do that. They don't necessarily need your attorney to get that done. You and your, your, your personal manager will kind of get that straightened out with your booking agent in advance. In the beginning of most artists' careers, when they start looking at managers, they start looking at them from the perspective of what the agent actually does. I just need some exposure. I need you to get me exposure. Can you get me some gigs? Can you get me uh, can you get me into some showcases? Can you get me into some open mics? Can you get me out there where people can hear? I just need to be seen and heard, right? That's actually not the manager's job. And where things get a little kind of messy is that most managers are willing to do that in the beginning because they really believe in the artist. They want to see them excel and, and really explode on the scene. And, and so the artist kind of doesn't understand why they can't continue to do that. So I think what the, the challenge is, is for the manager to take it upon themselves to say, look, this is what I can do for you uh, based on this. I can get you to this level here. And when we get to this level, we are going to get a booking agent, right? And they should have that conversation early. Most really good managers do. Uh, the other thing too is the percentages. Um, they're about the same. Uh, a manager's percentage is anywhere from a range of 10 to 20% of your gross intake. And the business manager, I'm sorry, a booking agent uh, is about 20% usually for booking your shows. Um, that's pretty, pretty much what is commonly done. If there's anything different than that, then it's been negotiated and accepted if, if that's what actually happens. Um, but that's primarily what these two people do. And I think if you have a really, really good team, then your, your personal manager becomes kind of like your point guard on the team. He's on the floor calling the plays. He's got the business manager who's handling the finances. He's got the booking agent who will take care of booking you gigs. He's got the entertainment attorney who's going to negotiate all your agreements. And you have a publicist who is going to make sure you get the proper exposure and publicity, which will make the well-oiled machine work so well that your career can't help but thrive and move forward. So a lot of times uh, when you see some of these artists that are really going out there and they're really just kind of exploding um, on, the, on the scene like that, there was a, a team of people working behind them and more than likely it was kind of spearheaded by the personal manager who worked very close with the artist about what their goals are and what they want to achieve and just they have different time frames that they're trying to work within to make sure that this stuff happens uh, in a timely manner. So basically that's that's pretty much how that works. Um, I hope that was clearly defined enough for you BG and for all of those out there who needed that and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Stay with us. Get ready to take notes, because here's this week's assignment. Question number one. How much do production companies pay attention to open mics or smaller concerts? 
In my response, I said the following. One of the key elements of being an artist is being able to perform, and production companies would like to be assured of that, so these showcases help to develop that skill. What happens off stage is just as important as what happens on stage, so the audience response is another way to gauge the effectiveness of your performance. Unfortunately, a lot of executives may not be able to attend your showcase, so capture it on video and send it in. Make sure to include a wide shot so it includes your audience. Question number two, what's the difference between an agent and a manager? Believe it or not, this is confusing for a lot of people. So let's start with the manager. His or her role is to make sure that they give you the proper advice for you to make your career decisions. And it's based on your area of expertise. The agent's job is to get you performing in front of your fans as often as possible. They usually work pretty closely with your manager to make sure that you're in the best suited performance situation. In the beginning of your career, it's sometimes difficult to find a booking agent who'll take you on as a client. So some managers will wear both hats until such time arrives. It's not a good idea to do that, however, on a long-term basis. Lines get blurred and things get confusing. So your manager should let you know that right up front. And this episode's tip, this is not just your career, it's your life. So whoever's working with you should have experience or access to resources. Stay mindful. And that about does it. Uh, I want to thank our viewers who submitted questions. SB of St. Louis, Missouri and BG of Greenwich, Connecticut. Thank you. Welcome to the Industry 101 family. Thank you to Team 101 for your support. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to our viewers. And if any of you out there after seeing this episode feel so inclined or inspired to do so and you have a question, send it into the email address at the bottom of the screen and we will address it in a future episode. This is your host, Robbie Jenkins, saying take care of yourself and we'll see you next time on The Industry 101. Take care.